So hi everyone and welcome to another part of modeling with RFM5, it's Ayla here. In the first tutorials we learned different options, how we can enter model data, access different dialogues, and now we will move on to modeling different types of structures. Within this tutorial I will show you first how we can create member hinges. For that we will model a simple example, for instance the one from our last video, the continuous beam element. But this time maybe we choose a cross section out of the library. I will select an I section, it doesn't matter which one. Let's say an IPE 200. And as much here we will select one out of the library as well, a steel S235. Then we can click OK on all of these dialogues. And we will create two members. The first one will start at the origin, 0 and 0, and will end at this point, 3 and 0. Our second member will start here and end at 6 and 0. With the right click, we will cancel out of this, and then we need our supports, a hinge one at our start node, and the other two supports will be able to slide along the x direction. So now how we can define and insert member hinges for those members. Again, we have more than one option to access the dialog for that. We can do that directly using the project navigator or alternatively, we could also use the tables down here. I will choose the project navigator and as usual to add and create new elements, we do that with the right click in our case on member hinges and then with selecting new member hinge, a new dialog will appear. By creating a new member hinge, we can see here that we would have six degrees of freedom if we had a 3D type. Since I've defined a 2D type back in the general data, we have only three degrees of freedom, two for translation and one for rotation. We can fully fix or fully release these. In our example, we want to release the moment. For that, we will click here and release the rotation around the Y axis. Next, we can find partial fixities. Um, if we don't have a fully fixed one, we could specify these with entering a spring constant, but for our example, we don't need that right now. So we can click OK to close this dialog. Now that we have defined our member hinge, we can see it here in the project navigator and we can assign it to a member now. With a double click, we can open the edit member dialog. Let's say we choose our first member and then we can manually apply member hinges from this drop down menu here and we can find the member hinge that we have just created. What we could do in general is also to change the member type. Uh, a beam type, what we have here right now is defined as a fully fixed member without any member hinges. And with a changing the member type, for example, to a truss, the moment is automatically released. Um, since a truss is defined in the program as a member with uh, member hinges on its member ends, and this is also why we cannot enter down here additional hinges. Just as a hint for you, um, we are going to use the hinge that we've defined. For that, back to the section member hinge, and for this example, let's say we'd like to apply a hinge at the middle support, and this will be the member end of our first element. Next, we'll click OK, and then you see the member hinge is displayed as a white point here. Maybe two more hints at this point. The first one, if you don't know what's your member start or end, we can click on the member and then we can see a red arrow which shows us the orientation of the member. And the direction refers to our modeling direction. Like if we create a beam from the left side to the right side, then our member start will be the first node and our member end the second one. Or the other way around, like if we enter our beam from right to left, then the member start will be the second node. What we can do is also with a right click, we can turn on the member orientation. And now the orientation is displayed without clicking on the member and we can reverse the member orientation as well with the right click and then reverse member orientation. We can delete um, these ones and move on with our model. 
Next, we need a load um, for that the same procedure like we've learned in the previous tutorials. First, we define a load case, then we will apply a member load of 5 kN per meter. For that, we will enter here a 5 and then we will graphically assign it to those members. So now before we calculate our system with a hinge, I'd like to copy our model in order to show you the results and to compare them like the results with a member hinge and without one. For that, we will select our beams, including our loads and supports. Then we can find up here, move and copy. We make sure that the number of copies is one. Then we can select graphically where we'd like to insert it, like from the origin down here to three and zero. Then we double click on the first member of our second model and we will delete the member hinge. Next, we can go up here and run the calculation. As you can see now, the moment at our hinge is zero like it should be. And down here, of course, we have a negative moment. So this was our fourth tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we will learn how to model different types of frames. And again, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, you can write in the comments below, or you can also visit our website, lubal.com. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.